do you think the market is thinking we're having a, a little bit of a cyclical turn in growth or a structural change in direction in what has been such a bullish sector in recent years? Well, I mean, I think, Wilfred, you have both. Uh, so if you think about the smartphone industry, for example, you know, this will be the first down year in smartphone unit growth since the first uh, smartphones were launched back in 2007. So, and that, I think that's structural. I mean, you have over 4 billion people on this planet that have smartphones. The replacement cycles are, are stretching out, so people used to buy new phones uh, in about one and a half years. Now that number is closer to three, three and a half years. By the way, PCs, people replace them closer to six years, so there's no reason that this won't keep stretching out. So that's structural. Then to your cyclical point, yeah, we've been in the longest bull market since World War II at 115 months. Profit margins are at record levels, and now you've got growth slowing across the globe in different regions. China, obviously, the countries that are linked to oil, uh, like Russia, et cetera. And so, you know, that's more of a cyclical thing, but we're just at the beginning of that. So I think you have both of those going on at the same time. Dan, I know you can't talk specific stocks with us today, but given that point of view, do you think the pullback we've seen in smartphone stocks or chip stocks, which of course are a byproduct and linked to that move, do you think they're justified or are they overdone, uh, the extent of the pullback we've seen? Well, I think they're completely justified, and in fact, I don't think they're sharp enough. Uh, if you look at a lot of the names related to the smartphones or chips, you know, they've, out, they've outperformed the market. Uh, my belief is they should be dramatically underperforming the market when you look at it over a one to two year basis. You've still got a lot of inventory of chips uh, for smartphones out there. Those need to be cleared. Demand clearly doesn't look like it's going as well as it should. Um, you've had several negative pre-announcements from companies that ship into the smartphone space. Um, and I think you're going to have a lot of other companies pre-announce um, as you get towards the end of December or cut the forecast for March. So I don't think it's actually, uh, I don't think it's justified in the fact that it's not down enough. Do you think, uh, Dan, that when we're looking at this trade tension with China and the fact that the president came out of G20 saying that they were going to work toward a deal and put a, a, a temporary halt to these um, tr tariff increases, how much are you weighing this in when you're looking at the tech sector and its um, profitability and growth in the future when it comes to getting a trade deal done with China? Yeah, it's a great question, Contessa. I think the, the issue here is, as you talked about earlier, I mean, you have Larry Kudlow coming out and saying one thing, you have a Peter Navarro coming out and saying something else. And if you look back, um, you know, uh, multiple months ago, if you remember, there was sort of this meeting between the current administration and the new uh, President Juncker, and they sort of said, oh, you know, we've kind of come to an agreement to halt things. But here we are several months later, and we're still sort of dealing with whether they're going to be auto tariffs in Europe. So I, I think that the issue is that there's really no, no certainty around any of this. And this constant back and forth of different headlines, you know, I've sort of taken the tack of I'll believe it when I see it, so I'm not really that focused on trade. Um, I'm more looking at things from a big picture standpoint and saying things were slowing down, you know, before a lot of these things happened. Um, and they're sort of cyclically rolling over to Wilfred's point, as well as there's some, you know, fundamental issues like with smartphones. And so that's what I'm trying to focus on, because if you try to trade the headlines, you're just going to get absolute whiplash, which is what we've seen, obviously, with stocks over the last couple of days. Dan, what do you make of the valuations in, in some of the social media stocks? Um, well, I think you just hit on what I'm actually uh, bottom fishing. So um, if, you, if you think about what you're trying to avoid, um, what are you trying to stay away from? Well, you're trying to stay away from companies that sell into China. You're trying to stay away from hardware-oriented names whether there, are, whether there are tariffs. You're trying to stay away from industries and structural decline like smartphones. So the good news is when you look at the social media stocks in the U.S., you don't have any of those issues because those companies have been locked out of China. So that's the good news. Um, the other thing is actually when I look at China itself, today we got some news that China, as you know, has not been approving new video games since March of this year. That's nine months ago. It looks like they finally started up that approval process again. So, you know, some of the names we were buying today, and we were buying them very small, but we were buying them, were Chinese uh, gaming stocks. 
because we feel like finally, because these stocks are down 35% of their high, you know, if you haven't been approving new games for nine months, you know, that's costing you a lot of revenues. If you're finally starting to turn that back on, well, that's a good sign because China is, you know, one of the world's largest gaming markets and it's been effectively shut down for nine months for, for new games.